Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia, I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews, and I have six, sorry, seven new reviews for you folks at home, uh, and that includes this week's uh, Downtime and Death, Apocalypse Gates book number five in that series, Stormlands, a new Lit RPG, uh, Lost in the Game, Dream State, Song of book number four, uh, Axiom, a Divine Dungeon series, a Torian Archives book number one, uh, Chaos Rising, The Realms book number six, and of course, we're going to also have some uh, nice contributor reviews from Ian Mitchell. Uh, but before we get into any of that stuff, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Little RPG News, we're going to be with a couple stories here. Uh, first, uh, the Greystone Chronicles, written by David Mark, is getting new covers, at least for the beginning portions of that series. Um, if you look at the series as it was previously, you can actually see some uh, very interesting design choices uh, for those, cover, those early covers specifically. And then later on, I think there was like a very nicely established uh, cover artist that was maintained. Um, and they came out really lovely. And then this is actually redone to make sure all those covers are in sync with the same kind of characteristics, the same kind of um, art style. And I think it's really going to help push through um, people, maybe people who judge stories by covers, which is what they're there for. Um, so I think it's a great, great choice. And I'm like, yay, very pretty. Uh, but you can definitely check that out on the show notes. So we'll link in the show notes for those covers or just buy the book. That's always a good choice too. Um, in other little bit news, we have Arthur John L. Monk. He did an interview with the podcast author stories. Um, go give it a listen if you enjoy his work. He talks about what got him to writing, um, mostly non little bit stuff with the first half of that particular podcast. Um, he does talk, talk about little bit a little bit, a bit when about the 34 minute mark in that episode. Oddly enough, um, no mention of his publisher, uh, Mountain Dew Press, at all, including like him talking about how how, how well he did in Little Pretty. I was like, oh, that's 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 interesting. So there you go. Um, but definitely go check it out if you want to um, hear uh, John Monk's story. Um, in other Little Pretty news, we have Luke Chimalenko, a wonderful author of the Sunday Line series. He has his own merch page now. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoy Ascend Online or the other stuff that he's written, he's also written a fantasy story um, that, that's done amazingly well. Um, but there are sweaters and mugs and phone cases galore. All This kind of makes sense as to why the author has been commissioning so much artwork at this point. I was like, oh, wait, this is all like a lot of good fun stuff. Like, But it's going to cost a lot of money to get all this stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, now it's all making sense in my brain. I'm like, this is this is one of those ways he's cooping those costs or doing well. And it makes perfect sense. If you love a series, you love the art, this this is definitely for you. So go check it out. If you're a fan of the Santa Line or Luke Shemalenko, um, go buy some stuff. Um, also want to remind you that there are still some Little BG deals. I know Black Friday's done, uh, but there's still a few deals that are continue on into December, um, including some from some of these authors, uh, Fortress of Shadows, Stonehaven, which is the second book in the Stonehaven League series, uh, A Dungeon of Desire, Guardians of Roundtable, um, Somnia Online, book number one, Game Makers Online, book number one, Pateria Online, book number one through three is an omnibus is on sale as well. Um, the Black Light Chronicles, book number one, and the Fifth Survivor series, books number one through six, are all on sale um, until about the 7th to the 9th of December. So they're all on sale now. Uh, they're either free or 99 cents. So definitely go to get those all check out. They're great um, ways to save some cash if you're interested in trying some new stuff. Okay, um, in other little bit of news, we have Michael Scott Earl, the author who was kicked out of Amazon. He was a little bit of author. He done some little bit of stories, which is that he also, he also wrote a bunch of other stuff um, that's a little more Haramish or um, some other stories, not little bit of necessarily. Uh, but I've always considered him one of the community, and a lot of people, other people have. He wrote an amazing series called uh, Lion Quest, which you unfortunately can't really find anymore because Amazon. Uh, anyways, um, but he. He's, he's publishing through his own website, including audiobooks and ebooks, and he's publishing wide. Um, but to fund those things, he's had to go to crowdfunding to make sure essentially there's the capital there to to fund those projects and also help 
allow fans to kind of determine which products are going to get funded first. Um, and last time it was Tamer. This time it is Space Knight. He's actually using Indiegogo uh, to fund this particular project. Um, the initial um, ask on that particular crowdfunding project was fifteen thousand dollars, and that this it reached it in less than twenty four hours. I got to say, so um, it, it, it that just goes to show that people love Michael Scott Earl. They love his work. They love his stories. And Space Knight originally was a game lit kind of story. Um, which is why we're talking about here on this podcast. Uh, it was really enjoyable. I enjoyed the first few books in this. Um, I eventually petered out and moved on to other things, but the series has continued on. I think the series also turned um, into something that satisfied uh, maybe the harem community, um, just from the description on the Space Night 5 book, ebook, and audiobook in the, in the Deco section, if you read it there. Uh, but if you're a fan of Microsoft Earl, if you love the Space Night series, I think we'll go, go back at it. Um, in the notes for this particular Indiegogo project, be aware that the campaign rewards and the the, the stuff there, um, those have changed a little bit. So if you just want an ebook, you might not want to donate just because um, the goals are set up a little bit differently. Um, and definitely just go check it out. We have a link in the show notes to Indiegogo.com projects. And the author actually explains why he chose to, to, to kind of separate things a little bit, just to make it easier to get the product out a little bit faster um, so that everybody's a little more satisfied. So there you go. Okay, on to stuff that is out now. Um, that includes Darkness Conquered, Darkness Online, book number three. Also out is the eighth book in the System Apocalypse series by Tao Wang. So yay. Um, and this is new, The Game of Gods. Um, I've, I've heard that title before. I have. It's not the same as this author. Um, so maybe an unfortunate title choice. Um, but this is another little bit of story that came out recently. Also out is Before Apocalypse, Dungeon of Perdition, uh, and Dungeon Rule book number four by Jonathan Brooks, which is doing amazingly well. I mean, like, I think it's top 100, top 200 on Amazon right now. It's only been out for a couple of days, and so good for you, Jonathan Brooks. Super proud of you, buddy. Um, but it's out now for folks who haven't heard about it. Um, in new audiobooks, slightly lower week, a lot of weeks... Sometimes the audiobooks outpace uh, the ebooks in publish, publication. This week it's a little bit slower. We only got a couple this week, including Tower of Heaven, book number two, um, and uh, Pathways, which is the third book in the Dark Elf Chronicle series. It's going to be voiced by the great folks at uh, Sound of Theater, um, written by Dave Wilmarth, of course. And so definitely go listen to both of those. They're both really good stories. I, I think I believe I gave sevens, high sevens for both of them, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but great audiobooks. Um, in upcoming Little BG, this is just where I read off the stuff that's coming out in the near future. We got a um, couple editions here, so listen if you like to, or skip ahead. It's okay. Um, on the 9th of December, just coming up is going to be the second book in the Knockout series, uh, written by Dan Soganoff and Max Largo. It's uh, set in the Level Up universe, which is the same series that uh, Dan writes by himself. This one's a little more combat focused, so I'm, I'm curious to see if it continues on that line. Um, also out on December the 10th is going to be the fourth book in the Afterline Online series, Deadline. December the 10th as well to be the another book from uh, two Russian authors, uh, Anton Emanov and Sergei Savanov, uh, in the Last Time Loop series. So this will be a new series. Um, on December 11th, it'll be something I've never heard of before, uh, Path of Darkness, Black Flame Online. Uh, December the 13th, Quest for Justice, third book in the Hero Online series. Um, December the 14th, the seventh book in the Good Guy series. December the 15th, it'll be Gloria Formation Emperor book number one. Again, another series. Um, have, wait, I believe that's one I just read. They just change the date. So never mind. This is a double. I think they just changed the release date and they changed the cover art. So there you go. Ignore me that one. Uh, December the 18th, it'll be Respawn, Nightmare Mode, the fourth book in the Respawn series. Uh, December 20th, it'll be Karma's Touch, uh, Chronicles of Ethan, book number three. December the 23rd, um, Underdog, book number two, which is a really good kind of series. I was surprised how much I enjoy that one. Um, book number, oh, this one's definitely new. You guys have probably heard about it. It's a little, little series called the Chaos Seed series. <laughs> the eighth book is up for pre-order. It'll be out on January the 1st, 2020. Uh, it's called The Land Monsters. So, uh, go check it out. If you, if you want to try something that a few other people have enjoyed. <laughs> um, on January the 6th, it'll be Ruled of the Changed, book number one, No Mistakes, uh, by, uh, Vasily Mahenko. Uh, January 19th, uh, Discardian book number three, 
January 22nd, uh, Dragonheart Sea of uh, Sands, the fourth book in that series. Uh, January 24th, Hero Online, book number four. Uh, January 31st, Fantasy, Endless Fantasy Online, book number two, called The Elk Kingdom, if you enjoyed book number one. Um, February the 6th, 2020, The Bad Guy series, book number three, will be out. J- February 20th, 2020, will be Invasion, book number two, also written by Vasily Manko. Uh, the fourth book in the Seeds of Chaos series about on February 29th and on March the 9th, it'll be the Incar- uh, Incarnator <laughs> uh, product seller book number one. And that's actually published by uh, Magic Jump Books, which is the only reason that this is on this list, because I'm assuming they they, they know what literally is the novel description. So like, mm, OK, that's we'll have to see what it says, um, but they know their business. So uh, that's Russian translation. So we'll have to wait and see what that turns out to be. Um, but that's it for the list. Uh, on to new releases and reviews. Okay, first up this week is going to be Downtime and Death Apocalypse Gates, uh, Author's Cuts, book number five, uh, written by Daniel Schienhofen. It is 528 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Limited, and here is the author's description. After visiting Nevada, California, and two apocalypse gates, Alvin was tired. With Gothi and now Kuro beside him, they faced necromancers and undead army and saved a queen from assassination. Alvin could only wonder what was going to be thrown at them next. First, however, a vacation was in order. Returning to Green River, seeing the first settlement he helped build, and revisiting old friends was cathartic. Alvin knew that he would not be able to stay long as something was bound to happen to push them back on the road again. Alvin had to decide where they would go next and had narrowed down to it down to two choices, south into Texas or head north and east into Colorado and maybe the Great Lakes. Either choice would mean meeting new friends, new enemies, or both. And the author does warn, the book contains adult situations in all their horror and glory, including two, uh, uh, sex abuse, uh, uh, drug use, murder. It also contains graphic sex scenes, um, portrays elements of BDSM and harem you've been warned. So there you go. Then that's all absolutely true, folks. This is uh, the an adult book. Um, so there you go. Um, full disclosure, I received an advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, this is a good entry in this series. I actually really enjoyed the slightly slower first half of this novel, which is um, talked about in the novel description a little bit. Uh, the vacation section where these re- re- revisits that first community he set up. Um, I like the base building. I like re- really enjoy the community building a lot. Um, there are different kind of conflicts there. Um, there was a little bit of action in the first half, but I like the other kinds of conflicts. And I really just enjoy like catching up with characters that I'd kind of invested in, but I hadn't seen in a while um, and seeing some of the new stuff that they had done. Um, so it was, it was really nice. I actually, in particular, actually like the use of the training room. Um, it was a nice way to have speculative action without murdering people permanently. I thought it was like a nice little way to, to handle that. I wish I, <laughs> I was like, wait, I've, I've used their training before. Why, why didn't I think of that? That's great. Um, so if you see that in future novels, it's, it's just, it's just an homage. There you go. I was inspired by Daniel. Um, the second half of the novel is much higher on the action side. Um, good stuff. I won't spoil what happens exactly, but it did remind me of book three a little bit in, in, in what occurs. I was like, Oh, this, this is okay. We're expanding. I think in another direction, this is kind of go a little bit. Um, there is graphic sex in this novel. It is a part of the series. If you're surprised by that, by book, what is it? Five now? I'm not sure why. Um, there is graphic sky. I, I skip her personally. I'm just like, Oh, look, sex is coming. Flip, 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 flip. Okay. Back to the action stuff or back to the RPG stuff. And I'm perfectly okay. But if you can't do that, don't read this. Um, but for me, some people really like it, actually, I, I should say. Um, I'm not one of the people who enjoys the graphic sex stuff personally, but I, it's, like I said, totally skippable. It doesn't change the, the story itself by, by skipping it. So uh, that's why I continue with this series because I like the other stuff a lot. Um, so it's a good story, good for fans in the series. Kind of like I said, like, I really like the chill first half of the story, I think, the most, just because I got back to some of the RPG stuff that I, I, I missed a little bit, the base building stuff, the community building stuff. That's that's all stuff I, I, I hadn't realized that I had missed so much. Um, so there it is. Uh, for me, it gets to score 7.7 7 out of 10. That's Downtime and Death, Apocalypse Gates, Author's Cuts, book number five, with the score again, 7.7 7 out of 10. And next we have Stormlands, a new lit RPG adventure written by Kobe E. Hill. It is 140 pages. It's a nice little novella. It's $2.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. 
Here's the author's description. Status report. Transformation complete. Race generation. Human. World generation. Complete. Paulos woke up one morning to find himself in a new world. Though he felt like himself, he wasn't himself. The world wasn't his, yet it felt familiar. He feels powerful here and purposeful. People in this world are strange, unfamiliar to him, and yet he feels like he belongs to them. But this world is at a brink of destruction by something unknown. Caught between clan wars, only Paulos' powers could save the world. But what are his powers and what is his purpose? The journey takes Paulo to find himself, find his clan, and more so, find a purpose. And what if this journey was never real? Who is he then and where is he? There you go. Um, it, it says it's a novel. It's first novella in a series. So there you go. Um, this is the, uh, man, this is a uh, poorly written. No way to say it, unfortunately. Even just reading that novel description, I'm like, past tense, future tense, present tense. I'm like, wait, those are all different. And uh, so that, that's just one of the the... the writing choices that was made in this novel. Um, this honestly, this, this feels like one of the poorly done right to market stories, uh, by a publishing company that actually makes the rates uh, lists among their links in the front of this catalog uh, of the front links of this ma- of the novel, sex stories and Sudoku puzzles, which is not a combination. I, I thought a publishing company was going to do, uh, so it might be a smaller indie publishing company or just like somebody's personal company. I don't know. Um, but I'm like, oh, this is this is obviously right to market, and it's not done well. So there we go. The story itself, uh, dumb soon to this world, without context. There's a, a confused main character who just kind of reacts randomly to a bunch of stuff that happens to him. There's no plot on uh, or background or anything. Um, events just kind of happen without explanation, and it all kind of ends in a dumb sex scene. There you go. Um, it's this is technically RPG. I think I, this is one of those points where like when people tell me, oh, it's so hard to write literature PG. And I'm like, technically no, like stories, you know, do this all the time. Um, it's the, the, the bar to write a liberty isn't as complicated as people think sometimes, uh, to do it well, that's harder. Um, so this is technical liturgy. There are notifications, there's screen, uh, so there's a status screen, each hit points, all the mechanical stuff. And it's throughout the entire story. It is. Um, but this is such a poorly written story that it never matters. Um, I, I, I actually dislike this story. Um, and it was, like I said, that, that, that's, that's, that's something. Um, so it gets a score of four out of 10 as Stormlands, a new Ludo RPG adventure with a score of four out of 10. And next we have... Lost in the Game, Dream State Song, book number four, written by Christopher Keene. Uh, it is 335 pages. It is $4.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. With the screamers held hostage out in the real world, it's up to Noah to save them. After years of believing Chloe's brother was dead, a clue leads them to believe he's alive and in need of a rescue. It's a chance for everyone to finally make things right after the failed beta test. Unlike the ghost of the dream who controls them, Noah believes the former beta testers have a chance to live outside the game once more. But only if he can find them and free them from the ghost. Their mission is personal for everyone. Chloe's brother, Sienna's long-lost high school friend, Kara's boyfriend, Brock's co-workers. Everyone has lost someone to the Screamers. To save the lost Screamers, Noah and his friends must team up and venture into the real world, but the ghost is willing to kill in order to keep the Screamers captive. Can Noah and his friends survive a quest outside of the game? So there we go. Um, full disclosure, I received advanced copy for you. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, I honestly thought this was series was done. I really did. I did an author interview with the author, uh, I think, when book three came out. Um, and he's like, I'm not sure my publisher is going to go for a fourth book. Um, so I'd kind of like try and, and th- that arc in book three had really wrapped up most of everything. It kind of left a little teaser so in case the story was continue. It could, and it has, and this is it. Um, but in a lot of ways, this story feels like an add on, um, and, 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 and add on in the context of like, you have a finished MMO, you have this or this finished game and there are add on content that expands the story or it kind of ex- extends it out. And that's kind of what this story feels like. Cause there's not a lot of power progression in this novel. Um, it, so it feels a little bit more like cyberpunk game lit to some degree, because again, there is such few, um, such few uh, RPG progression at this point. Um, the first 20% of the story really recaps the last, last story arc, explains what the main character and his team are still working for the chem- game company. Um, again, there's also some content that, again, 
gives you more of a cyberpunk gamelet feel, um, including uh, cheatability that projects an enemy's intention while it's, and while it's cool again, it kind of enhances that cyberpunk feel um, since it bypasses the normal game system entirely. Um, but it's, it's explained in the novel. Um, there are also several of the places where the devs override or bypass normal gameplay elements, which again, feeds into that cyberpunk feel instead of being a lit RPG. Uh, Story-wise, Things are good. This is a very well-written story. I had a good time with it. Um, there are a couple places in the story where you can tell, like, oh, this this is this decision is not feel like it's in line with the character necessarily, but it's necessary if the story is going to go in a certain direction. And I get that. Uh, and the direction the story took may have been better for it. Um, but for me, it's like, oh, it, it's like I could tell because that's not necessarily what I would have thought that that character would have done. It felt a little bit like character, um, but I got why it happened. It still just bothered me a little bit. Um, on the game mechanic side, again, things feel a little more gamelet. Um, and that's not bad necessarily. Um, the game mechanics from the previous three exist and they're fully, they continue on. Um, all the virtual thefts exist. Um, again, there's just very little progression in terms of RPG stuff. Um, in terms of leveling spells or getting kill points or new powers or anything, since the main characters kind of hit like this level cap um, in the last three books um so again that's kind of good and why i say this feels like it's add-on content like deals like it would be dlc essentially um the characters instead do things that you, you would expect in end game content like focusing on player versus player stuff or exploring the world for these weird little quest lines or these out of the way places to like oh i've never i've never done this i've had the time now um or you're finding their gameplay in just small ways as something to kind of do or in this case um solve issues affecting real people in the real world um overall it is an entertaining story i liked it i really did um it's again definitely a little more cyberpunk game which is fine because this doesn't describe itself as lit rpd and that's kind of one of the things that bugs me is that in general is that when a story says oh i'm little bg but i'm not and i think to get way around way around that is just don't say you're little bg or just say you're a game leader or something uh and the story does it just it just it just is and that's which is why it's it's okay um it doesn't claim to be anything it's not which is i think the key to me um however i did miss the rpg progression a little bit um that's going to be get at a score of 7.3 to 10 that's lost in the game dream state saga book number five uh with the score of 7.3 out of 10 and next we have Axiom, a Divine Dungeon series of Arturians Archives, book number one, written by Dennis Vanderkirken and Dakota Kraut, a co-authored story. It is 448 pages. It is $4.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Here is the author's description. The town put to the sword. The young forcibly recruited. An old man out for revenge. After a town is put to the sword and the children are taken to replace the fallen, an old man is out for revenge. He's ready to fail at the most difficult challenge in the world, cultivation. Too corrupted to even take the first steps, the sly el old elder simply agreed with those who told him that it was impossible. Then he quietly ignored them, rubbed his hands together, and started anyway. He had always failed in what he did. He lost his way from the academy. His command was devastated by a mage. He lost his town, and now his last hope for the future had been stolen by a group of raiders. The only thing that had never failed him was his sharp mind and philosophy. He would cultivate, no matter what it cost him. A lifetime of failure can dull and dampen a soul. A reason to live, a goal, can change that in an instant. It is always darkest, just before the dawn. So there we go. Um, interesting notes there in the novel description. Um, I like the story. Um, I did not like it as much as the Divine Dungeon series. And I, I, I keep reading that in um, some of the other reviews. I, I don't, this says, I, I uh, preface this by saying, just about everybody really liked this series and I like it as well. Um, I don't think as many people liked it as much as the divine series, just like I didn't. And that might be because they have X because so many people really love that series. It's, it's, it's beloved by the little bit community in general. Um, and, and like, so, so there are already going to be high expectations for it's not because it says the divine gens in uh, kind of story on here. Um, so if you're expecting a dungeon core story, don't read this. This is going to be a disappointment for you. If you're expecting um, essentially anybody from the main series, um, just the main character, and you might not recognize him because he's a little less powerful than he's there. Um, so uh, just go into this knowing that this is a independent story. It's set in the same universe, Just, but just disconnect from your mind that 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 series is it. This this might as this is a different part of the world, different 
world. Um, there are similarities, like the world rules sort of work still. So just, just be aware of that though. Um, so uh, the review, I'd read the story. I read part of the story as a short story initially. Um, it's in the Divine um, Dungeon short story collection anthology thing that they did uh, not, that, not that long ago. And so I, I kind of knew what I was getting into from that short story, which is, which is good. Um, because the beginning of this novel doesn't feel like it's related to the Divine Dungeon series at all. It doesn't even feel like it's like Regie or, or Cultivation. It feels like a fantasy story. Uh, like the first, literally the first 25% of this novel um, feels like a fantasy story. Um, after the 25% mark though, like it did in the short story, um, things shift and you get more familiar elements. If you've read that series before, you'll get Essence and Cultivation, Mages, um, a reference to a dungeon. You're not, you're not going to see a dungeon in this novel at all. Uh, maybe in the series sometime, but not in this novel. Um, you're going to see familiar groups fine for control of an area and its essence. Um, so more of those familiar concepts come back in, in the story after that 25% mark, but just reading that first 25 like, oh, this is, hmm. And if I hadn't read that short story kind of prepping with that, I'm like, I would have thought this was just like this weird story that snuck in under like the Divine Dungeon series, you know, banner or something. Um, but after that point, it does get more familiar in that respect anyways. Um, this story is, is to me, I describe it as a cultivation sandwich. Um, there is a huge amount of like story progression and, and character development in the first quarter of this novel. Um, then there's major cultivation in the middle. And then at the end, there's more story and there's more conflict and there's resolution that big conflict. And the main character is, just, is, is, is a cultivator. Um, Unfortunately, what that means is that this is not really a literary RPG story. And again, in the novel description or in the title description, it doesn't say it is. So it's not going to get a negative score for me. Um, but just be aware that unlike the Divine Tension series, where there is a clearly understood and repeatable techniques um, to gain ranks um, in cultivation, which is just essentially RPG progression, um, that doesn't exist here in the story. Um, they're the main character does his own thing. He does his own kind of cultivation. And it's, it's very well and thoroughly described in this novel. Like literally the middle 60% of the story is just pure cultivation theory, pure cultivation. Um, and, and like it's two years for the cultivation in this novel, right? Um, so there's plenty of background information. And if that's what you love, you're going to have a great time with this. Um, but none of it really has any kind of, uh, uniformity has any kind of like really clear progression steps or any kind of clearly defined power structure there in everybody else for the universe in the story, those same things for the writing series still exist. And so there are references to like, Oh, rank F level two, whatever. Right. Um, but none of them apply to this main character. He's really doing his own thing. Um, and for me that, that was like, Oh, I'm like, Oh, this, that makes this a cultivation novel and not, really litter because we're getting one of the defining characters of RPG is that there is a clearly defined um rpg like progression system for for the power structure um and without that like oh it's, it's still a really good story and it's just a better it's just a cultivation story and that's okay if you're that's what you're looking for that's what you love you're gonna like this you really are uh but unlike the divine Union series it's not really litter RPG. so it is what it is um yep yeah, there you go that's, that's it so for me I, I still enjoyed it. Um, I like the action. The cultivation got, I think there was too big of an infidem for me for the cultivation stuff. Like literally 60% of the middle section novel is just cultivation. That's why I said story, cultivation, story makes it kind of this cultivation sandwich for me. And that was, like I said, so understanding, just didn't like it as much as the main uh, Divine Dungeon series written by the same author, uh, Dakota Crab. So for me, it gets score 7.4 out of 10. That's, um, like I said, a good score. I like the story. Um, Axiom, a Divine Dungeon series, um, Arturian Archives, book number one, with the score of 7.4 out of 10. And next up, we have Chaos Rising, The Realms, book number six, an epic little BT series written by C.M. Carney. It is 464 pages, $5.99 that is available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. War is coming to the realms. And only Griff and the power of his god can prevent the apocalypse. With his loyal NPC Lexa decide, Griff races to res rescue a spy 
with information critical to the survival of his people. A spy who happens to be Griff's younger sister. But when an unknown foe rips Griff from the realms, Les Ma Lex must lead a ragtag bunch of companions to find the one man who can get Griff back. Their quest has hardly begun when Lex discovers the princes of chaos have turned their malevolent eyes on the mortal realms. And where their gaze falls... Destruction follows. Can Lex and his allies prevent an extra-dimensional invasion in time to save Griff? Or will chaos rise? Okay, um, this is a Lex story. And there are some people who do not like Lex. They do not like the fact that the story, um, whenever the story takes um, parts from the main character Griff. And this is one of those stories. Um, however, for me, unlike the independent like Lex story that happened um, early in the series, which I still thought was really fun and interesting... Um, this one still has the other members of the cast. So even though Griff is not in the story for very long, um, Lex um, is the main character and it's the other members of the cast that, that if you've read the series, um, should be really familiar. So this f still feels very much like a realm story. It's not an independent thing. That's like, that's like a side story. It's, it's a main series story. It has some very main series um, consequences to it. So just, but just be aware that there are some, there are some reviews who are like, oh, I can't believe this is another Lex story. I'm like, it's, it, it is, but it's not necessarily a, just about Lex. It's still the main series. Calm down. Um, not that you're not in your opinion. You are. We all are. Um, but if it, that, if Lex bothers you, don't read it. That's perfectly cool. Um, just be aware. It's just actually talked about in the novel description. Okay. Um, I like the story. I really do. Um, actually, I, I, I like this story, I think, a lot more than some of the other ones that have happened recently in the series. And I think part of that is because the story is in part scaled down initially. Um, it it goes to a different location. Um, so you actually get an entirely new environment to explore and play around with. Um, and there was some really good story twists here. And I, I, I genuinely like that. Um, there's some nice plot twists like, oh, that that's a good that good for you, man. It's like that's cool. Um there, however, is minimal RPG regression. Um, and there are a couple reasons for that. Um, some of which I can't probably describe in detail. Because I've I've I recently talked to the author and he, he told me some of the things he has planned for the series. I'm like, oh, okay, so that's that makes sense why there's not a lot of RPG regression here, because he got plans where he doesn't want to invest in in that yet. So, so I, I'm not going to say more, but I'm like, Oh, that makes sense. And another part of that is that the story takes place in a different um, location where those um, order, those game mechanics stuff don't necessarily um, mesh with the rules of that place. Uh, I think I'm trying not to spoil things. Um, so there are a couple reasons for that, um, but still it was something I, I thought was a little bit lacking in this particular story. Um, still beyond that. And a couple key places where like, you could tell there were a little wand waviness for the, for the plot. I really had a great time with it. I really did. Like the, the characters were fun. It was nice to see Lex come forward again. Cause he's kind of a, a fun character for me. I really enjoyed his particular side story is one of the funniest ones in the series for me. Um, and I've liked the character Lex quite a bit. So it's nice to see him come forward in this novel and and take on a more prominent role because when griff is around he he really is a secondary character i mean I, he's not the main character obviously but uh i think he's a strong enough character that he can he carries this story really well um and it, it, it was interesting to see a different point of view and to get like the slaps of comedy and also that that quirky personality that lex has and see it deal with these problems and consequences and actions and and leading a group it was i i, I enjoyed it quite a bit um so there we go. Um, I had a good time with it. I, I, I was surprised when I read the actual page on this. I was like, really? It's almost 500 pages. It felt like it was a lot less. I felt like it was 250 pages because it just, it was so entertaining. It kind of zipped by for me, which is always a good quality. In my opinion, when a story just kind of goes because you're just so into it so much, that's always a good marker for me. So, um, I kind of found myself just going along for this chaotic ride uh, <laughs> action. Um, and this story really does wrap up, um, a thread introduced in the last book and introduces a new thread, which I think people are going to find interesting um, from what the author tells me, what he's plans to do in the future. So I think it'll be fun uh, for me. It gets score 7.7 7 out of 10. That's chaos rising the realms book number six uh, with the score of 7.7 7 out of 10. And next we have Ian's picks of the week. I need some, I really need like some special lecture for that for that segment. Um, this is a segment where contributor Ian Mitchell, uh, a long-time Liberty community member and reader, 
who reviews uh, just about as much as I do. He was nice enough to to contribute some reviews to help fill out the podcast, um, just because we read different things. And I think it's, he, I trust his opinion on a lot of stuff that I don't have a chance to read. Um, and this week, that includes uh, Warrior Reborn, Silver Fox, and the Western Hero. It's called it calls itself a lit RPG Wuxia novel. So there you go. Um, I describe this as quite a rush. I love the prose. I so love the trickster. So are Fox and the hero MC are memorable characters. Alex definitely has an eternal hero vibe. Wuxia cultivation books have a lot of training. It was very interesting here mixed in with good action. The author's endless online series is a favorite of mine and Warrior Reborn is definitely on par with it in my books. There's definitely some player hacks and creative use of skills and items here. So much is hinted at that following books better be grand adventures. I love reading Wuxia and Little Pidgey. This does both well, uh, well long enough to have a complete story and short enough to me wanting more. Oh, and Fox Girls, PG so far. He gives it a 9.5 out of 10, which is a near perfect score. Um, I should I should qualify this thing that uh, <laughs> I had has been on a Wuxia, uh, Zanzia kind of binge lately. So I think this really hits his spot of, of mixing Little Pidgey and Wuxia. Um, so he, he gives it a score number out of 10, which is, I, I personally have been very few scores that high, um, but I'm going to let it stand because I trust the judgment and we'll put it on our, on our, on our, in our database. Um, but there you go. He gives it a score number five out um, He also reviewed, let's see, what was the next one? Uh, seven. Yeah. He also reviewed Axiom, which is a story we've already reviewed on this podcast, but I'm, I'm keeping here because I think it's good to get um, different people's opinions on the same novels because it gives you a, a wider range of, of viewpoints. And so Ian says, um, an older MC, that's the title of his review. Hmm. The beginning, the beginning with the description of village life did introduce Elder, the MC. I was wondering whether it was actually an adventure. See, something like I said. When disaster strikes, he takes up cultivation in his own way. Given that I'm a bit older grandpa, does Rocky and Rambo, wait, given I'm a bit older, grandpa does Rocky and Rambo was a blast for me. Great reading. And he gives it a score of 8.5 out of 10. So he had a good time with it. He actually had a better time with it than I I think that's because, again, he's been on this Wuxia, Zandia um, kick. Uh, so um, it, it really jived with what he was feeling vibing at the moment. And I'm just not in that same place where I'm like, I'm not on that same vibe of, of Wuxia and Zanzia. I, I like cultivation personally, um, as it kind of depends. I, I still like to see the RPG stuff. So as long as it's doing that, great. If it's not, it, it it's less satisfying to me. And I think that's where some people might um, deviate. So there you go. Uh, but there you go. So that's the end of Ion's re- uh, picks of the week. Okay, that's it, folks. That's the end of the show. Thank you very much for hanging with me, for listening, for watching. Uh, remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, or our webpage. Um, definitely go follow us on LitRPGPodcast.com on Facebook. That's probably the primary way you can contact me. Um, I hang out there the most. So you can send us a message. You can ask us to review particular novels. Um, if there's something you found that you love that you think we might enjoy here. Or if you're an author and you want, um, and you written a liberty story that you put out and you you wanted me to add it to the list for the week of things that have come out or coming out in the future, feel free to contact me on Facebook there or at uh, feedback at geeksbypodcast.com. Both places, great places to reach me. Um, but again, if you want to support the podcast in any way, shape, or form, you can find all the ways to do so and help to keep the podcast free and at free uh, at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. Um, thanks for hanging out with us, ladies and gentlemen. And again, uh, really, you let me into your homes, let me into your lives and your cars or wherever you listen to us or watching the show. Um, you let me take up a little bit of part of your life and you get a glimpse into mine and my love for Little Bridgie. So thank you very much for taking the time. Um, until we can hang out again, folks, though, remember to read some Little RPG.